Once you've shared the analysis file from Tag and View over to your computer, you need to open up Naxport, press these three dots, and then go to Tools, Import, and Import from Tag and View. You now need to choose the analysis file, so press the folder icon and open the analysis file, the tg.nac, the .tgnac file, and then you choose where to save that analysis. So it's going to be in your Naxport data folder. You could have a folder structure here that you save it to. You can set a new name for the analysis. Then what you'll need to do is link this to a video. So you select a video file that's on your machine. And now you need to go through a process of synchronizing the tags that you did with the video. So on tag and view, you would have pressed to start the first period and start the second period. So at those points in the video, when you press them, you get to that point. Remember, you can use your playback control, so spacebar to play and pause, N and M for frame forward and backwards, the left and right arrow keys to skip back and forth. You find the point that you synced at, and then you press synchronize. Now you go to the same point for the second half. So you find that on your video. So I'm pressing my left arrow key to skip back here. Find that point and this time you have to make sure that you've got second period selected here. And now press synchronize. When you've done that, you've now synchronized the tagging that you did on Tag and View with a video that you're now linking it up with in Naxport. So you now press Open Timeline. Now that the clips are in your timeline, you might want to use your first half thrown button and your second half thrown button to check that things are aligned exactly where you need them to be. If you notice this is slightly out, what you could then do is use the tool to move registers. There's a full tutorial on that but you might find that this throw-in clip starts um, two seconds later than it needs to be. So you could use this tool and then move all of the clips back by two seconds, for example. And you could do that for the start of the video, but then if you find the second half is out of a line, you'd move your uh, cursor over here, open the tool again, choose to move all the clips, but now only change everything after that point. So with your clips aligned, what you can now do is review the dashboard. Click the dashboard icon and your dashboard menu will open where you've imported your dashboards. If not, you might want to do that now. So to do that, you come to the dashboard menu, you press the option to import, and then you go and find uh, the dashboard file. So let's import this one. So remember you downloaded those files from the link that you received. There's one for hurling and one for football. It's the same process for both of them. So once that dashboard has imported, you can then open it. Now the dashboard will start loading all the information that's in your timeline, which is all the analysis that came from your tag and view analysis. So the benefit of the dashboard here is that it obviously shows you all the information, but it's interactive. So you can click any element here and you'll watch those specific clips which link to it. So for example, if I wanted to see all three shots, I press this number three and I can see those. Now the clips that you're seeing here aren't linked up with the video, but they would be in your scenario. So every element is clickable. For example, here, if I wanted to see all the shots from this zone, which resulted in a score, I would press this one out of one, and it will show me those clips there. So to explain the dashboard, you have puck outs. If it's the football one, this will be the kick outs area. It's the same principle for both of them. What you're seeing up here is the total number of your own puck outs and how many of them you won yourself. So four out of five, 80%. This is the opposition puck outs that they won. So the opposition won three of their own, uh, of their four puck outs and a 75% success. The numbers 
show you that uh, we had a puck out to this area, but we didn't win it, nor of one. We took two to this area and we won both of them. Again, if you click that number, you will see those clips. With the puck outs, we're going to see the total amount that we won here. We're going to see the amount that we won clean or broken and ruck. Um, there's different terminologies on here for the football side of things. And then these ones, this is saying that we had five puck outs and we won four of them. And from the opposition's four puck outs, we won one of them. So it's then vice versa in the other way. The opposition uh, won one of our five and they won three of their own four here. This is just the number of turnovers. Um, green is our own team. So our shots that went wide, post, out 65, saved or blocked, short, from play and from placed. Same for the opposition here. Then down at the bottom, we see where the shots came from. So green is our own team, orange is the opposition. And shots are very similar to how we looked at for pick, uh, puck outs and kick outs. So we had three shots, two of them resulted in a score, whether that's a point or a goal. We could see um, a successful one came from here. We had a shot from this zone, but we didn't score. And then the opposition, it's the same scenario going down here. So they took two shots from this zone, but only scored on one of them. Remember, all of these pitch elements on the tag and view uh, window and in the dashboard, we see everyone is going this direction of play for, for each half. We've got our scoreboard up here, and then we can see the number of primary possession clips we created, how many of them turned into an attack. So that's after you press possession, then you click the attack button. And after we've pressed that, how many times basically did we press the shot button? And on those shots, how many of them turned into a score? So you've also got the number of those um, primary possessions which resulted in a score. So because that manual mode possession button stays on until you turn it off at the very end of that play, it will register the descriptor of a score being in there, which is how this information is calculated. Uh, similarly with this one, if we had a possession on and we click the turnover button, it's going to put that information into the possession clip. Fouls here, number of cards and types of cards are quite self-explanatory too. So when you've got this dashboard, a couple of things you might want to do is export this. And if you press this icon up here, you can choose to save out this dashboard as an image. So that could be our full game uh, analysis that's there. And if you press this dynamic icon up here, what you can do is you can move these sliders. So we might say, okay, just show me the results from the first half. And then we press to refresh. And once we've done that, all of the information in the dashboard will refresh for that time period. So we can see now only three puck outs in the first half. Um, and the reason this timer is down here is that's quite a useful reference to you that if we drag this for the second half, we could say now from 52 minutes up to 102. And we'd refresh. Now it's just showing the second half information. So if we've done that and close it, we could then export an image for the second half, do the same for the first half. Okay, now we can refresh and see all of the information again. A couple of other things you might want to do. There's a few editable areas up here. So where it says game title, you could right click and edit that label and you could put in some text there if you want. You can also do the same with the team name and team name. And when it came to that dynamic tool, you know, where we changed it to first half and second half, you might edit this to say full game, first half, second half, depending on what uh, setups you had there. So something useful with our dashboard to do is use it to actually filter clips and then use the other Naxport tools like building a presentation. So if we're here, we've got all of our analysis, we might want to use our matrix tool to see that information as well. Again, everything that's come from tag and view. So for example, if I wanted to see all of our shots um, that came from our own puck out, I just follow the name of the category and the descriptor. I press the number and I'll start watching those clips. But if we build a presentation window, 
So if we make a new presentation, if you're a basic plus, it will just open up one. And then we fill a presentation window with different lists. So I could say key clips, and I might say all of our puck outs or our kick outs. What we can also then do is use our dashboard to filter information in. So if I open up the dashboard again, I might say that we just want to look at all the puck outs that we want. So I'm going to go up to here, four out of five of our own ones, or actually let's go all of them because we also want one of the opposition. I press that number five, it shows me those clips. And now if you press this icon, we can add those clips to the list that we've built or make a brand new one. And the benefit of doing that is that we can use the presentation window in Naxport to highlight and get our information across to our team. We can come into each of these clips. We can double click it here, type some notes, play through the clip, find a moment that we want, pause, press the drawing tool. And now we can use the built-in clip draw tools, whether that's basic or animate. And we might want to highlight some different points So I'm adding my drawings, changing my colors. I might even want to move a player into a different position. These are all tools with clip draw that you can uh, explore. You might already have it. So I'm going to start with a freeze frame and I'm going to have this player moving, spotlights, arrows, etc. And we save that and it now becomes part of our clip. So from that analysis that you did in Tag and View, so you analyzed it live at the game, you then linked it up with a video in Knack Sport. You've reviewed all the information. You've used the dashboard to filter and find the specific clips you want. Then you can build these presentations with different clips, notes and drawings that you can then play back if you're together as a team or save out as video files that you can then share elsewhere. So once you've got the analysis linked up with the video in Naxport, there's a huge amount of tools and processes that you can do. So use your tag and view to do your live analysis, bring it into Naxport, link it up with the video, then filter everything down and create your feedback resources to go at the end. Hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you very much.